Nam Jung Paik, I Expose the Music, edited by Rudolf Freeling and published by Spectre Books. Charlotte Moorman was arguably the most important of Paik's collaborators during his career. A classical cellist who trained at various institutions, including the Juilliard School in New York, Moorman later recalled that once, while playing a solo, she found herself wondering whether she had turned off the gas stove in her apartment. At that moment, she realized that the classical repertoire was too boring for her and she started seeking out contemporary music. In 1961, three years before meeting Pike, she began performing pieces of new music by John Cage, Philip Corner and Lamonte Young. She felt liberated by the freedom of performance, which required her to make decisions about the character, duration and sequence of the notes she played. Pike and Moorman first met in 1964 during the New York performance of Carl Hyde's Stockhausen Originale, presented as part of the second annual New York Avant-Garde Festival, which had been started by Moorman. Pike's interest in performance was rekindled by his meeting Moorman, which he considered a stroke of great good fortune. He had here too searched in vain for a female collaborator and had now finally found one. According to him, Moorman was maybe the one and only candidate in the whole world. She would play an extremely important role in his artistic work over the next 30 years. This is attested not only by their numerous joint performances, but also by Pike's tribute to her after her death in 1991. In addition to writing an obituary for the New York Times, he produced new versions of TV Bed and TV Cello and created a new work, Oil Drums, homage a Charlotte Moorman, which evokes their joint performance, Variations on a Theme by saint -Sian. They had first performed this composition, which Pike created for Moorman in 1964. In it, Moorman began playing the Swan from Camille de saint -Sian's Carnival of the Animals, 1886, before standing up midway through, walking across the stage to a water-filled oil drum whose contents the audience couldn't see, and climbing in with the help of a ladder. She then climbed out of the barrel, dripping wet, and returned to her cello to play the rest of the piece. In the 1960s, the swan was already part of the standard cello repertoire. The light, floating notes are meant to conjure up the swan gliding elegantly above the water, an impression counteracted by Moorman climbing into the barrel with a loud splash, accompanied by water sloshing out of the barrel and emerging soaked from head to toe. Pike remarked, I take very cliché classical music and put some salt and pepper in it. The piece is designated a variation, which typically refers to the modification of a classical theme in respect to melody, rhythm or harmony. For Pike and Moorman, however, the variation is not musical, but based in action. It is intriguing that their variation was subsequently subject to repeated variations too. In Paris, Moorman performed for the first time wrapped in cellophane rather than an evening gown. In Frankfurt, she sat on one assistant while another put the end pin of her cello in their mouth. In Venice, they performed the piece in a gondola, and Moorman got into the Grand Canal instead of an oil drum. After her death, Pike wrote, It was very lucky for me to find her. 